What you get when you put together the fast-paced scheme of X's and O's with a little bit of money and make it into a big game show? You got this. Tic-tac-toe. Today on the Wide World of Game Shows. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews presents... Wide World of Game Shows! Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. Welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. It's the Wide World of Game Shows. I'm Dual Bear, known to you as the Big D. Now, I apologize for the way I look right now. I have been an accident to, today at work, so pardon the red bruise right in the scent, right in between, out uh, above the, the nose, okay? I apologize. But for now, let's get into today's why World of Game Shows episode. And I'm about to bring to you a game from the guys who brought you The Joker's Wild. A fast paced game filled with X's and O's and fun filled trivia. And good money, too. So now, without any further ado, I bring to you Tic Tac Doe. That's right, Tic-Tac-Toe, an American television game show based on the paper and pencil game of Tic-Tac-Toe, where contestants answer questions in various categories to put up their respective symbol, an X or an O, on the board. Now, three versions were made. Now, for this episode, I'm mostly going to be focusing on the 1978 to 1986 run that started on CBS and then later in syndication. The show originally started out on NBC in 1956 and was hosted by Jack Barry, who would later go on to host The Joker's Wild. Which, of course, he and his partner, Dan Enright, would actually create and produce. Anyway, the goal was to complete a line of three X or O markers on a standard tic-tac-toe board with the reigning champion always using X's and going first. Each of the nine spaces on the game board featured a category and contestants alternate choosing a category and answering a general interest or trivia question in that category. If they were correct, they earned the X or O. Otherwise, it remained unclaimed. The center square being of the most strategic importance involved a two-part question. With the contestant given a 10 second time limit to think of the two answers needed to win the square. Though in the 50s version, the contestant could opt out of the extra time. After each question, the categories shoveled into different positions. In the 50s series and the early 78 revival, the categories shoveled only after both contestants had taken a turn. Now, in the 1990 series, the category shuffled prior to the start of each contestant's turn, and the shuffle was stopped when the contestant in control hits his or her lock-in button. If at any point in the game it became impossible for either contestant to win with a line, the match was declared a draw and a new game started. The process continued until the deadlock was broken, however long it took to do so. This meant that a match could make could take multiple episodes to complete, which happened quite often. Now, in the game board on the original series used rolling drums, each containing the same nine categories to display subject categories, with light displays beneath them to indicate exit and O's. In the revived version, they used nine Apple II computer systems connected to an individual computer computer monitors to represent each game screen, all linked to a central Altair 8800 computer, which displays the categories, the X's and O's, and other things for the bonus game, which I'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, it was the first game show to use computerized graphics. The 90 series was used a completely computer-generated setup for its game board. Anyway, Anyway, Jack Barry hosted the uh, the original, but it would go on to some others, including Gene Rayburn, who would go on to host 
match game as well as Jay Jackson, Wynn Elliott, and Bill Wendell as well, who of course would be an announcer for one well for the original series as well. As would be Bill McCord. Now then the original run ran until 1959 on NBC. In 1978, the show was brought back on CBS, replacing the game show Pass the Buck, which that will be next week's episode. Not next week, the next episode. Oh god, that's not coming until later in the month. Sorry about that. Anyway, along with Colbert Television Sales as the distributor for when it got sent to syndication, now... The CBS run aired only 45 episodes, but then after that it went to syndication and Colbert Television Sales, who of course also distributed the, the syndicated version of The Joker's Wild, took on this and, well, I gotta tell you, it was really something. Now then, later on, they would add um, a money pot and... As questions were answered correctly, money was added to the pot, which meant to the winner, which, whatever, and what have you. Now, it, for the syndicated run, it was $300 for the center and $200 for the hour box. Now, starting in 1980, uh, there would be special categories added, like auction. Bonus category, the challenge category, double or nothing, the grand question, it's a dilemma, the jumping category, number please, opponent's choice, player pass, secret category, seesaw, showdown, take two, three to win, top ten, and trivia challenge. Boy, that's a lot of them. It's, I don't want to try and give all of these away if you've never seen the game itself. Anyway, when it came to CBS and then switched to syndication, the show was hosted by the legendary Wink Martindale, who does an exceptionally good job in hosting this game. He hosted most of the run until he left the show in when it was in its last season in 1985, and then it went to Jim Caldwell. The announcer originally was Jay Stewart, who also was the announcer for The Joker's Wild. And he was recently the announcer for Let's Make a Deal with Monty Hall. After that, Stewart left and went on to do the announcer for Reg Grundy's Sale of the Century later on. And then future Wheel of Fortune announcer Charlie O'Donnell would go on to be the announcer for the rest of the run. Now the and the syndicated version in 1990 was hosted by Patrick Wayne and its announcer was Larry Van News. Now Paul Tubman did the score, for the music for the theme music for the original, which I haven't really seen much of the original. Hal Hiddy, who of course did music for the Joker's Wild, would do the music for this series. And of course, let's see, I'm trying to find this. Oh yes. The theme song was probably well known, Crazy Fun. It's a pretty good theme, and I really liked it. The legendary Henry Mancini, you know best for doing music for The Pink Panther and TV's What's Happening and, and other movies like the like or TV shows like Peter Gunn, he did the the theme for the 90s syndicated version. But it wasn't... But it didn't last that long. It ended before... 1990 was over with, but continued in reruns after only 65 episodes were produced. It's hard to say how many episodes were done for the NBC run. The syndicated run lasted for... 1,560 big episodes. Now... After you win the game in the now, I'm going again. I'm going to focus mostly on the the Marindale Caldwell version. Now, the bonus game they play will be going on to face the dragon, kind of like face the devil in Joker's Wild, but a little different. Now, behind the nine 
computer mo the computer screens here. They have nine no the numbers one through nine, and behind one of those, well, behind each one of them contains a various amount of money, and then the words tick and tack. Now then, if you can get to maybe a thousand dollars or higher on the on the board, you will actually win a big prize package where it might have something good maybe or it could have um oh I don't know uh, or something like that could be maybe a furniture package could be a trip it could be something even better oh yeah and if by any chance a contestant can get through five rounds be five opponents they will win a card just like Joker's Wild now the ticket now if you find ticket tech in the bonus round, that means you get an automatic win. Which I've seen that being accomplished a few times. But beware of old green and gruesome, the dragon. If you hit the dragon, your game's over and you lose everything. Now sometimes if you do win again in the same episode, you will try and go for the same price package. However, it will change to a different price package in the next episode, just in case. So anyway, <laughs> I think that was pretty fun. In the 90s version, you had to maybe try and get an X and O, X's or O's on the board to try and connect well, tic-tac-toe line, while avoiding the dragon. The automatic win was the Dragon Slayer. Now, I have seen reruns of that 90s series on USA, which they aired at. Which, it was fine, but I prefer the original tic-tac, not the original, original tic-tac, though, but the Link Barndale Caldwell, ver Jim Caldwell version. It was so cool. I grew up watching... I'd seen that on USA, but I also caught it on Game Show Network. It was one of the first games I caught on there, as a matter of fact. Now, the show was also pretty big with some of its contestants, too. Uh, give me a moment, I'll show you. Now, here's a picture of Wink with the biggest winner of all time on Tic Tac Do, and that would be Tom McKee. And believe me, let me tell you, this guy was a real big winner on this show. I tell you what. Actually, uh, um, um, according to Wink, he still stays in touch with um, Mickey to this day, as a matter of fact. But let me tell you something. This guy was probably the biggest game show winner. For almost nearly 20 years, and what have you, until, until it was, well, completely surpassed by Michael Shirley, who won $500,000 all cash on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Anyway, McKee's overall winning was pretty much of a whopper, and what have you. $312,700 with other bonus game prizes and 8 cars. Yeah, can you believe that? That's incredible. Yeah, that was really something. He also, McKee also broke the record for winning the biggest pot in a match, which reached $36,800 after four tie games against challenger Pete Cooper. Anyway, you can find episodes with this big winner on YouTube, as a matter of fact. As long as Sony hasn't blocked them. But anyway, I got a lot of nostalgia for the Wink Martindale Jim Caldwell version. Even though I've never watched much of the Jim Caldwell version, I'm much more familiar with Wink Martindale. Now, let me... No, I forgot to tell you them. Let's see. Because, um... The reason why Martindale left after at, um, after the next to last season and and uh, Jim Caldwell took over, he Martindale left to host a game, his own 
new creation of a game called Headline Chasers. I've never seen the show, but maybe I'll look into it. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, Tic Tac Doe, it's definitely a fun game. I'd recommend you check out the 78 to 86 version. It's really good and it's fun. And if you find any episodes with its biggest winner, Tom McKee, then I think you'll really like it. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, it also shared some of the same music. Um, that was showing the, the prizes for the Face of Dragon round, just like the Face of the Devil round on the Joker's Wild. Yeah. So anyway, that's about it. Uh, so now you know all about Tic Tac Doe as best as I can tell you. So what are your thoughts on Tic Tac Doe? Did you ever watch this game and which version did you see? I'm pretty sure most of y'all mostly saw the Mario Dale Caldwell edition. Maybe some of y'all saw the 90s version with Patrick Wayne, maybe? I don't know. Please feel free to tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Sorry I had to salute with my hand my... I unfortunately kind of have a bit of a sprain here in the wrist, though, on my other hand after my accident. I apologize. But anyway, next time on the Wide World of Game Shows, it'll be on the game that this show replaced on CBS, and that being Pass the Buck with Bill Cullen. So thanks for watching, and if you like this, if I can get my hand up, you can check out these other two games that were done by Barry and Imright. In the upper left-hand corner is the is the Joker's Wild. The upper right-hand corner is Hot Potato, one of the most underrated games in my book. And the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the previous Wide World of Game Shows episode. Now it'll be on the kids game where in time is Carmen San Diego. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., as well as the wide world of game shows, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and I'll have another review coming up real soon. So until next time, I'm the Big D saying, well, got my hand up now with the screen. See ya. Bye now.